Well, hello there. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. Well, Skylum has either created a lot of controversy depending on your point of view, or has like just handed you a wealth of software that can take your images to just about anywhere you, you want to take them to. And it depends on your point of view. That's how polarized this topic is. But here's the bottom line. Luminar Neo 1.5 is out and there, there are currently six plugins now available with five more coming that Skylum has released as add-ons to Neo that added functionality that they had not promised in the original program. So currently there is HDR Merge. So now if you have Neo and you have the plugin pack, no need to get a separate program to do HDR. Noiseless AI, uh, which of course is noise removal. So no need to get a program like Topaz or something like that. And, and I will go head to head with it on, you know, against Topaz and you can see for yourself if this is gonna do the job for you. Uh, upscale AI, background removal tool, um, AI based. Focus stacking, so again, very few programs are out there right now that do focus stacking. And super sharp AI, so a sharpening program. So these are adding in above and beyond what Neo had originally offered. And there are five more plugins yet to come and they will be released. And, and they've been getting these out like, like I almost, almost wanna say one a month, one every other month. So there's been a lot of value here, but they have moved to a subscription model mostly, okay? Now, currently, as of today, I'm gonna to tell you what the pricing is. So as of today, if you've never bought Luminar Neo before, it's $99 for your first year. That's $8.25 a month. That includes two licenses, so you're getting two computers that you can use it on at the same time, and you're getting the six extensions or plugins that are currently out there, plus the five more that are coming. Um, it renews at $119 a year. I'll give you a coupon code at the end of this video to save 10 bucks on it. Uh, so $89 for the first year, all right? So that's a great deal considering all that you're getting. Most importantly, is it worth it? Let's find out. Okay, so I am here inside of Luminar Neo version 1.5. I am using a PC, but it shouldn't matter, Mac or PC, it should be fine. Uh, there is a different download depending on what piece, uh, which Mac you have. If you're using the M1, there's a separate download for that, so be sure to look for it. All right, first thing I want to show you is HDR Merge because I feel like this is a very common plugin that a lot of people have, and typically people buy another program for it, like Aurora, which is also made by Skyland, by the way. So all you got to do is select the images that you want to merge. I have actually seven here, and drag them over to the HDR Merge. There are a few options if you click on the gear. Auto alignment, I definitely want to do that. Uh, chromatic aberration, I, I'm not worried about that. And ghost reduction, this is on a tripod with no people present, so I'm not worried about that. All I got to do is click merge and Aurora, well, I'm sorry, not Aurora, Neo will work its magic the same way Aurora would have uh, in the past. So let's take a look at the results. And there we have it. So. We have a phenomenally well-blended HDR image. We took seven exposures and Neo did a great job. And now I can just bring this in to edit and I can start working on this with any of the other tools that I would have wanted to use. So HDR merge, is it worth it? It works very well. Yes, I'm gonna go with a yes on this uh, as opposed to buying uh, something like Aurora. And, and let's keep in mind Aurora, last version of Aurora was 2019. So I would say that this plugin, definitely worth it. All right, the next one I wanna show you is noise reduction because this again is a very common tool that photographers very often need. Uh, I actually took this image from a helicopter of New York City and it is just filled with noise with it so if we zoom in here oops let's bring that picture back let's zoom in you can see there is a lot of noise let's wait for the image to uh to pop in there a little bit and so this definitely needs help with noise i mean you can see how let's take a look at this verizon building see how much noise is in this image so let's run it through uh noiseless ai and let's see what it does so let's just go over to edit 
And noiseless is actually not in the catalog, but it's on the edit tab. So if we go over to here, we just open it up and there's noiseless. And it's telling me right off the bat, it's telling me use the middle adjustment for this image. So if I just click middle, the AI again will analyze the image and work a little bit of its magic and we'll see what kind of results we get. Okay, so there we go. And right away we can see the Verizon building is looking much better, much better. Um, I think we could probably go to high. Let's see what high does. And there we go on high. And let's look at the before and after. All right, so that's the before, that's the after. Before, after. And again, now I can continue to go in and continue to work on this image and edit it. But overall, uh, in terms of removing the noise from this image, it does a good, solid job here. Let's take a look again over at these buildings. That's your before and your after. Before, taking a look at that darker um, skyscraper right in the center there. And now the after. And you see how it's all cleaned up in this area right here. So it does a very, very good job. Now, how would Topaz handle this image? Well, you know what? Let's give a little comparison and let's put, pit them head to head and let's see what it would have done. Okay, so one of the nice things about Neo is it can operate as a smart object within Photoshop. So I can just go on over to Filter. Now that I have this image opened up in Photoshop, and I can go to Skylum and Luminar Neo, and then I can run the noise reduction again, uh, pretty much the same way I did, and it will work as a smart object in Photoshop. So let's take a look. I'm gonna hit apply, and we'll swing right back in. Okay, so we're back here in Photoshop, and you can see it is in fact a smart filter, so let's just take a look at the before and after. Especially, let's take a look at this Verizon building. So that's the before, and that's the after. So really nice job. Let's look a little bit over here. This is after, so here is our before. This building is just totally blown out. You could tell I had no idea what I was doing photographing for this helicopter, uh, but we can fix a lot of it, uh, thankfully. Now, I'm gonna pit it against Topaz, but I do want to let you know that it's not necessarily a very fair comparison in terms of cost. So I'm going to pit it against Topaz Photo, which is their latest project product, which uh, it does noise reduction and sharpening, but I'm not going to use the sharpening feature, just the noise reduction feature. But let's just put it out there, the price point. That is $199 per year. Well, not per year, $199 and then an annual subscription. So... For $199, you get one year of updates, and then after that, you need to pay a maintenance fee to keep your license uh, uh, you know, up to date and, and to get the latest uh, features. Okay, filter. I'm going to go to Topaz Photo AI. Again, this is their latest and greatest. Okay, so we are here in Topaz Photo AI. It's version 1.0.9, in case you're interested. Uh, it's going to automatically kind of detect what it thinks we need. And let's see how it does. Looks like it has finished. And I mean, you can see this, oh my goodness. This Verizon, uh, let's wait for this to pop in. If you're looking at the Verizon image here, it is just super, super clean. You can see sharpening is off, so I don't have sharpening on. This is just using the autopilot setup. Let me bring it back to Photoshop and we'll compare the before and after. Okay, so I have the Verizon building there. Let's take a look at, this is the Topaz version. That's the Neo version. That's the original. Okay, so Neo does a very respectable job. Uh, Topaz, of course, does, I mean, a, a ridiculous job. I, I mean, that's just amazing. I'm, I'm blown away. Let's look at this, this black building here. This is the Topaz version. There's our Neo version and there is our original version. So again, Neo and Topaz. So, you know, maybe my only critique here would be that we lost some of the horizontals and the verticals of the windows in this building that Neo actually did try its best to keep. Um, but again, for the price point, I would think that 
you really can't complain with the results that you're getting here. Although I would have to say that the Topaz image is superior. But again, price point, I mean, we're, we're, are we really comparing apples to apples at, at, at this point? So next up, let's look at focus stacking. This is one of my favorite techniques to use as a photographer. I, I love taking uh, focus stacks images. It, it's, it's a way to get absolute edge to edge sharp, sharpness in your, in your picture. So your foreground is sharp, the middle is sharp, and your background is going to be sharp. There's no way you can do this in camera without using this technique. So I love photo stacking and it's, it's fun for, you know, it's landscape photography to me can be very relaxing and, and I just find it fun to do these. So I have a series of stacked images. So this one's focused. Um, I, I can just show you really quickly. We're focused here on these flowers in the front. And as we progress through the stack, the focus point moves till we're focused basically back to the background and infinity here. So we're going to take all four of these images and we're just going to drag them over to focus stacking. And there are a couple of options here, auto alignment and chromatic aberration. Um, my only critique about this is there should be ghost reduction. That is to me very seriously missing in this plugin, but it does the job. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the result. And you see we have a image that is sharp from edge to edge. So we're Definitely, oops, let me bring that back. Definitely sharp here in the front. And we are sharp all the way to the back there. Look at that lighthouse. Look at the crisp, sharp edges on the lighthouse. It's absolutely perfect. Um, we did have, well, we would have had issues if people were moving. And there's not really a lot of visible ghosting here. I could see a little bit of ghosting. But again, that's just something that, that would really just put this plug in over the top for me would be to have that ghost reduction. Uh, unfortunately it does not. And I kind of miss that, but hopefully as Skylum updates these plugins, that's something they'll consider adding in. Um, otherwise you can get some very funky results. If you try and focus stack images with people that are moving from frame to frame to frame or anything that's moving really for that matter from frame to frame to frame. Um, so we're going to hope for, a little bit more from this, but again, is it worth it? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, what else could have done this? Photoshop could do it, but Photoshop is going to have the same problem with ghosting. Helicon, that's a dedicated focus stacking program. We have ghost reduction built in and uh, it works super easy. But again, this is just an add-on giving you something that, a, a, a tool for your toolbox that you never had before. So again, is it worth it to me? Yes. All right, so the next up is upscale. What does upscale do? It makes a picture bigger. So this picture I have is of a water droplet. You're seeing it on the screen right now at 100%. I'm going to drag it into upscale. And I have an option here to make it double the size, four times the size, or six times the size. I'm going to make it six times larger. Let's hit the upscale button and the software will work its magic. And let's take a look at the results. Okay, so here are the results and you can see it did a great job of enlarging this image. It's now at 66%. And if I bumped it up to 100%, you can see how much larger this picture now is. And in fact, it is now 2,058 by 2,580 pixels. So six times larger than it was. And it did a very good job of making this JPEG image much larger. So great job. I'm super happy with that. Again, for what it's costing me for the price of the pro subscription, $8.25 a month, this is a feature that you know, you wouldn't have otherwise and to be able to crop in really tight on an image and then upscale it up to six times larger, you know, th there's a tremendous amount of value here. And again, I, I, do I think that this plugin is worth it? Yes, I do. All right. So we have the final plugin, the background removal plugin. Now, again, this should be something that should be fairly straightforward. We have a black Nikon camera pretty much on a white background should be a ground ball for it. Let's give it a try. Okay, so this plugin uh, extension or whatever you want to call it, it's a little bit hidden in Neo. So I'm going to show you where it is. So you're going to go over to layer properties and then you're going to go over to masking tab in layer properties and then you'll see background removal AI and just hit that. And again, let's let the 
AI work its magic and we'll see what we get. And as is expected, we have a pretty good selection of our image. I missed a little bit up here, um, but you know, overall it did a pretty good job in terms of the selection. We hit remove. And then there we go. We do have our cutout. Now we could have refined it a little bit and gotten it a little bit better. Uh, it did miss in here. It missed in there. And of course it did cut off up there. But overall, I mean, I think it did a pretty good job. Okay, so I'm going to throw something a little more complex at it this time. Now we have the elephant. So let's try and pull this elephant off the background. So again, layer properties, masking. And let's just hit background removal AI. Let's let the AI work its magic and... We'll see what happens. Okay, so the AI has made its selection and obviously you can see right away we definitely have some problems here. Part of the trunk is not selected, the tusk isn't selected, and there's some problems down here. Now, here's my problem with this tool. There's no easy way to fix this. Um, we can go back into masking here and let's get out of the plugin and we can now rush in the areas that we wanted and for whatever reason actually we lost the removal maybe I didn't hit remove let me hit remove first okay so now the background has been removed so now what I can do is I can go in with my brush and I can make it super small and now I can paint in the rest of this trunk but as you see since I don't know exactly where the trunk is this becomes a very painful process because there was no way for me to fix this selection from the beginning and well quite honestly there should have been so now I am stuck with this and, and again can I clean this up yeah but is it now a lot of work to clean this up a lot more than it should have been so for me background removal is it worth it I'm gonna say no on this one it needs more work okay so the last plugin I want to show you is sharpness AI so I have a picture on the screen here of this bird that unfortunately was just a little bit uh, too soft and out of focus. So let's see what we can do. So we're going to go on into edit. And then from here, let's go right on over to super sharp AI. And uh, yeah, let's try, uh, let's try low. Let's see what low does. Let's let the AI work its magic. Okay, so that's not bad right there. I, you know, I kind of like that. And you know what I like about this is this tool has the ability to mask. So now I can just brush in the sharpness on my bird right here. And that's it. So that to me makes this plugin a lot more worth it than the previous one that we just saw because, yeah, you have to have the ability to, to mask things in easily uh, with these plugins. And so we can see the before and the after. Before. The after it's just a little bit more crisp, a little bit more sharp. Let's go into 100%. And let's take a look at our bird here. That's our before and after. And let's uh, let's just go a little further with it. Let's put it to medium and see what it would have done. And now here's medium. So you see we're getting even a little bit more detail in the bird here. So medium also seemed to work pretty well. And again, I just love that ability just to paint in just the area. Uh, of exactly that we want masked in. So is this one worth it? Yeah, I'm going to say I'll give this one thumbs up. All right, I'd love to hear how you think these plugins um, kind of held up. If you think they're of any value or if you don't think they're worth the price, let me know in the comments. If you follow the channel, you know I tend to answer just about as many comments as I possibly can. So hey, just say hello. I don't mind. And most importantly, if anything in this video was helpful to you, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified of future updates to the channel. It's the best way you can thank me, aside from maybe leaving a comment and saying hello. Anyway, thanks for watching YouTube. See you next time. Bye-bye.